Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday breakfast TE session, dated 13th of February 2022. This is being conducted under Forum of Cardiac Anesthesiologists Bangalore, which is also the Bangalore chapter of IACTA. Today, we have two important uh, faculty mentors who will be taking us through the topic of mitral regurgitation in ischemic heart disease. The faculty members are Sanjita Umbrekar and Dr. Abhijit Shitore. At the end, there will be a discussion. Please feel free to uh, either write the question on the chat box or unmute yourself and uh, speak out your question. And I request all of you to keep your mics muted except for the faculty that is Sanjita and Abhijit. And I request uh, Dr. Sanjita to take over. Yeah, thank you and uh, good morning. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Nuli Kanchi sir for uh, giving opportunity to express uh, on, and share my uh, views regarding ischemic uh, mitral regurgitation. So now I invite uh, uh, Dr. Abhijit Chitore who is an assistant professor at the Department of Cardiac Anesthesiology at Jain Medical College and a consultant of cardiac anesthesiologist at Dr. Prabhakar Kore Hospital and Medical Research Center, which is popularly known as the KLE Hospital, Belgam, Karnataka. So uh, he will talk and give his uh, expertise uh, opinion on assessment of ischemic mitral regurgitation using transesophageal echocardiography. Dr. Abhijit. Uh, thank you, Madam, for that kind introduction. Without wasting time, I will start my session. So uh, in continuation with our uh, program of TE in coronary uh, artery bypass surgery, uh, we will continue with the assessment of ischemic MR. <laughs> So ischemic MR is a uh, mitral artery regurgitation due to complications of coronary artery disease, in particular myocardial infarction. And it is not just association uh, of coronary artery disease with the intrinsic valve problems like rheumatic or uh, degenerative heart diseases. So basically it is a secondary mitral regurgitation. Diagnostic criteria for uh, chronic ischemic MR uh, can be summarized as a 
I am talking about chronic because uh, uh, what we get in the OT for assessment after the patient is posted for CA, which is usually a, uh, a secondary MR. Uh, so the MR occurring more than 16 days after myocardial infarction with one or more LV segmental wall motion abnormalities with the significant coronary artery disease in the territory of uh, that particular regional wall motion abnormality and with provided the uh, mitral wall leaflets are structurally normal <clears throat> and the cord tendon also are normal. The third third criteria is very important to exclude the patients with the organic mitral regurgitations and aso uh, aso which is associated with the coronary artery disease. So secondary or functional mitral regurgitation is referred to as a mitral regurgitation resulting from the myocardial dysfunction causing inadequate closure of mitral wall leaflets. Now there are two important things which is to be considered here. One is a uh, there is a reduced closing force and uh, there is an increased tethering force. So the, these are the two main uh, uh, pathomechanics behind the uh, functional or uh, secondary mitral regurgitation following myocardial infarction. The, <clears throat> the, uh, as I told you, the during systole mitral leaflet closing is mediated by the interplay of closing forces, which is the, the, these closing forces are exerted by the LV intracavitary systolic pressures on the ventricular surface of the mitral leaflets versus the tethering force which is applied or which is uh, provided by the uh, leaflet uh, which, rest, uh, which re restricts the leaflet motion uh, by pulling the uh, leaflet away from apically away from the mitral annular cooptation plane. So the, basically it is a uh, inter uh, coupling between the uh, these two forces following the myocardial infarction outward displacement of papillary muscles lead to stretching of the caudate tendon and increased tethering force and that will prevent the cooptation of the mitral uh, valve leaflets and resulting in the uh, mr mitral regurgitation adverse local and global remodeling of the lv changes the geometry of the papillary muscles and resultant dynamic vector forces exerted on the cordae leaflet system and that will cause non cooptation tethering forces are applied by the lv papillary muscles and annulus along with the apical posterior and lateral vectors causing incomplete mitral valve closure annular dilatation may also contribute to uh, the this particular stretching of the leaflet causing incomplete closure. Usually annular dilatations are seen in global uh, LV dysfunctions or the anterior wall myocardial infarctions where the you know, more of the tethering comes when there is a inferior wall uh, infarctions and leading to papillary muscle tethering in the posterior uh, papillary muscle. In uh, ischemic MR, a spectrum of anatomical abnormalities of both LV and papillary muscle exists, but final common pathway includes tethering of the subvolular apparatus. So <clears throat> there are two phenotypes uh, of the mitral regurgitation, ischemic mitral regurgitation. One is called as symmetric and another one is asymmetric phenotype. The symmetric ischemic MR is result of global LV remodeling, as I told, and the, uh, there is annular dilatation as a primary or important pathology, uh, secondary to the anterior or multiple myocardial infarctions. Asymmetric phenotype, uh, its etiology is a posterior leaflet tethering and a regional LV remodeling resulting from the infralateral myocardial infarctions. So this is uh, a brief uh, uh, um, uh, mechanism uh, depicted here of ischemic MR, uh, which is uh, like two categories, systemic versus uh, uh, or symmetric versus asymmetric MR. If you can see here, because of the, uh, the regional LV remodeling of uh, following the posterior myocardial function or uh, inferior wall uh, MI, there is a pulling of only one leaflet, tethering of only one leaflet resulting into the eccentric jet. While in a multiple infarcts or the global uh, or anterior wall MIs or the multiple MIs, the, uh, the closing force is not proper. So there is annular dilatation and there is a central ischemic jet, you can see here. So this is our patient uh, which is having a central type that is a symmetric phenotype and another patient which has a uh, inferior wall MI problem leading to the eccentric phenotype that is an eccentric jet or a asymmetric phenotype. And you can see here the, the tethering of the posterior mitral leaflet here in the mid-esophageal mitral commissural view. Uh, you can see a proper tethering of the PML resulting into the MR. Uh, uh, symmetric ischemic MR is global LV dilatation, asymmetric ischemic MR is a regional LV dilatation. Uh, the uh, uh, 
the more common uh, single uh, blood vessel supply of a posteromedial papillary muscle is probably the important reason behind uh, having that eccentricity of the jet and the regional LV remodeling tethering and resultant CMR uh, restricted displacement of the anterolateral papillary muscle due to structural buttresses offered by the interventricular septum can also be one of the cause so uh, 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 there is a difference between the symmetric and asymmetric tethering whenever there is asymmetric tethering the there are higher degrees of uh, mrz because they are eccentric ones while when there is a symmetric tethering the being pi primary pathology being annular dilatation usually jets are smaller so in those patients lv may be dysfunctional more than the uh, asymmetric variety but mr jets will be smaller but in asymmetric tethering though lv are a little better the jet uh, or the uh, uh, the severity of the jet is more this is uh, the uh, slide which is showing uh, the major differences between the symmetric and the asymmetric ischemic mr phenotypes uh, if you can see here tenting volume uh, the tethering angles tenting volume and mr origin and direction are uh, central uh, tenting volumes are higher and uh, the tethering angle anterior is equal to posterior both angle are same while if you go for the asymmetric tethering the posterior uh, 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 angle of the pml or the pla angle is more and tenting volumes are usually less tenting volumes and the directions are of the jets are posterior but if you consider the uh, uh, severity the asymmetric jets are more severe than the uh, than the symmetric jets so in allen carpentier classification where does our ischemic mr fits the usually uh, the asymmetric or the inferior wall mis they result into a, a type 3b jet where there is a, uh, a restricted closure during systole usually ischemic mr or functional mr and otherwise there is a type 1 jet where there is a, a symmetric tethering where there is a annular dilatation as a primary pathology so this is type 3b and this is type 1 so uh, this is allen carpentier type 1 in first image uh, you can see and this is a allen carpentier type 3b in the second image we will go briefly through the mitral valve apparatus and mitral valve uh, anatomy because this is very important when you are <clears throat> dealing with the ischemic mr so mitral valve apparatus is uh, uh, basically it is a three dimensional functional unit uh, of uh, anterior and posterior mitral leaflets comprising annular attachments of the atrioventricular junction that is annulus quadri tendineae papillary muscles and most importantly supporting L left ventricular wall this but this the role of supporting lv wall is very important in ischemic mitral regurgitation normal mitral wall function depends on intricate coordination of all these the all the all these above factors uh, so the, this is uh, the uh, mitral wall apparatus uh, the, there are um, uh, the annulus and then there is a anterior mitral leaflet posterior mitral leaflet there are two commissures and the posterior mitral leaflet is divided into uh, three scallops Uh, the uh, uh, P1 scallop, P2 scallop, and P3 scallop. The <clears throat> P1 scallop is towards the uh, um, anterolateral mitral com uh, commissure, and the corresponding segments of the anterior mitral leaflet, the they are labeled as A1, A2, and A3 scallops. Basically, they are not scallops; they are just divisions. Actual scallops present only in the posterior mitral leaflet. So, <clears throat> annulus is a saddle-shaped dynamic fibromuscular ring. Uh, it it shares. Uh, the a2 scallop of the um, anterior leaflet shares a common attachment called as automatral curtain along with the aortic valve that is a, a left or non coronary cusp of aortic valve mitral valve annulus is a non planar structure and uh, if uh, there is a loss of planarity uh, it is usually seen with uh, mitral valve incompetence in ischemic mr so <clears throat> during systole annular area in decreases by 25% this is a normal uh, uh, annular uh, dynamics Uh, the annulus is shadow shaped uh, and uh, if you see uh, in a uh, 3d image or a, a, a 3d constructed image it, there is a definite non planarity in the mitral valve annulus where there is a uh, the, the it is it looks like a uh, chip potato chip if you can see bigger potato chip uh, uh, if you can compare that with it just i have kept it for the uh, comparison so this is not a planar structure it is a non planar that's why it is a very difficult uh, for repairs and all if it comes to the uh, mitral valve procedures in the ischemic mitral regurgitation so uh, there are two leaflets uh, anterior mitral and posterior mitral leaflets 
AML covers two thirds of the cooptation area and one third of the annular circumference. PML covers one third of the cooptation and two third of the annular circumference. It is a quadrangular structure, while AML is more of a triangular structure. Classifications, as you know, there is a classic anatomical classification, Carpentier and Dur Durand classification. Most commonly, we are using the Allen Carpentier classification. And uh, the Allen Carpentier classification, as you know, uh, there is a P1 at anterolateral uh, commissure. P2 scallop in the middle and P3 scallop in the posterior medial uh, commissure towards and uh, the corresponding segments of the anterior mitral leaflets are A1, A2 and A3. So this is a transgastric basal short axis view uh, where uh, you have this particular orientation of the uh, uh, mitral valve. Uh, uh, towards the far, far, far field of the image, you have A1, A2 and A3 uh, as you go towards the posteriorly and P1, P2 and P3. So this is a 3D view uh, of one of the patient and uh, if we rotate Z to this uh, 3D view to come into the surgeon's view, you have the scallops of uh, AML and uh, PML uh, uh, shown in the figure. I'll just run through this because the, this, the important topic uh, is uh, regarding how to assess it. So there are two papillary muscles, central lateral and posteromedial papillary muscle. Junction of the middle and the apical third of the left ventricular wall is important when uh, you deal with the papillary muscles. If any infarct or any uh, ischemia in that particular area, they, it is going to be an increased tethering force and leading to the ischemic MR. So AML has a dual blood supply. Uh, that's why most of the times the uh, infarcts which are happening in the into the uh, anterior territory, uh, they spare the anterior mitral leaflet and it causes lesser tethering force. So the usually jets are smaller, but PML has only one blood supply. That's why whenever there is an inferior wall MI, the tethering force of the PML is uh, increased and that is leading that leads to a severe forms of mitral regurgitations. <clears throat> Here in a transgastric uh, two chamber review, if you can see there are two papillary muscle and there are chordae attached to the papillary muscle. Uh, uh, this is one of our patient uh, transgastric two chamber view at 90 degrees showing the papillary muscles and the uh, uh, the posterior papillary muscle, anterior papillary muscle and the chordae tendon attached to it. There are three chordae, primary, secondary and tertiary chordae. Uh, primary chordae attached to the tips of the leaflet, secondary into the body and uh, tertiary are at the basal part of that particular leaflet uh, with the LV wall. Uh, supporting LV wall, because as you know, the <clears throat> ischemic MR is because of the myocardial infarction, uh, the supporting LV wall plays very important role in cases of uh, mitral regurgitation in case of ischemic uh, MR. LV myocardial infarctions and ischemia leads to change in LV geometry, causing displacement of the papillary muscles and may cause uh, mitral wall incompetence. Now, why it is important? Why so much about ischemic MR? The functional ischemic MR occurs up to 40% of the patients who are uh, who are suffering or uh, who have suffered a myocardial infarction. Uh, uh, it is present in 7 to 31% of the patients who are coming for the coronary angiography, and it has been reported that up to 41% of the coronary artery bypass grafting patients may have some sort of myocardial, uh, so some sort of ischemic MR, either a, a trivial, mild, moderate, or severe. Uh, presence of MR is a marker of poor outcome. It is a pure chronic. Uh, definitive type of ischemic MR of all degrees may have a major prognostic and therapeutic implement implications. CABG patients with un uncorrected mild or moderate MR are at increased risk of death and heart failure hospitalizations. Hence, consideration of the surgical repair or more aggressive medical management uh, in a follow-up is advanced or uh, is warranted. The, re in re the reported in-hospital mortality rate of isolated CABG is only 3%, but if it is combined with the mitral wall procedures, it is 7 to 20 percent. So that is why the mitral, uh, the ischemic MR is so important uh, to as a as a as a cardiac anesthesiologist and as a cardiac surgeon uh, if you are dealing with such type of cases. The current guidelines for the treatment of the ischemic MR associated with coronary artery disease coming for surgical reversalization are isolated CABG for grade one that is mild, CABG plus minus MU repair for grade two, and CABG plus repair or replacement for severe type of mitral regurgitation. In chronic moderate ischemic MR undergoing CABG, usefulness of mitral wall repair is uncertain. In latest guidelines also, uh, it is the same sentence has been written. Uh, they are working more on it. There are so many trials going on, uh, CSTN trial and all. Mitral wall surgery is reasonable in chronic severe ischemic MR of C and D variety undergoing CABG. 
so this is a focused update of 2017 where they are uh, uh, categorizing the uh, secondary or ischemic mitral regurgitation and they are giving the wall hemodynamics for dealing with uh, with those uh, uh, they have not changed much in between there was a big debate about whether to consider effective regurgitant oria orifice area of more than 0.2 or 0.3 as a severe and uh, uh, regurgitant fraction of more than 50% as a severe or not but Uh, ultimately they have come to the conclusion of uh, similar kind of uh, uh, grading for, for for the primary and the secondary mr so this is a 2020 update of acc aha here also uh, the guidelines uh, depict the similar uh, uh, severity indices only thing here is the severe wall hemodynamic criteria are provided for the assessment of mr severity but not all criteria for each category will be present in one patient so categorization of uh, severe mr as mild moderate and severe depends on the data quality and integration of these parameters in conjunction with the clinical evidence so they are giving more importance for the clinical evidences also how the patient is having the preoperative uh, parameters or how he is behaving preoperatively how much uh, time he has been heart failure uh, ad admission for heart failure and all so depending on all that things uh, we are uh, uh, planning whether to address such mitral valves or not so this is a in brief grading of the uh, mitral regurgitation uh, there are quantitative there are uh, qualitative and there are uh, um, uh, supportive signs uh, in uh, in uh, 2021 update of uh, european society they have given qualitative semi quantitative quantitative and structural they have added this structural also in secondary as well as a primary mr so uh, the uh, 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 the rest of the criteria is like vena contracta uh, the uh, 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 most of the criteria is like vena contracta and all they are same but they have added uh, uh, the uh, time velocity integral of mitral valve uh, divided by the aortic valve uh, tvi and uh, uh, so some of the few uh, uh, parameters uh, with the uh, existing parameters of 2017 so the milder variety is graded as uh, uh, quantitatively as less than 30 30 ml of uh, volume per beat uh, regurgitant fraction of less than 30% and effective regurgitant orifice where area of less than 0.2 moderate uh, between 0.2 to 0.39 regurgitant orifice area the regurgitant fraction of 30 to 49 and regurgitant volume of 30 to 59 more than 60 ml regurgitant volume more than 50% regurgitant orifice uh, sorry regurgitant fraction and effective orifice area of more than 0.4 is considered as severe along with the specific signs of severity of uh, mr jet uh, occupying more than 40% of the la area uh, vena contracta width of more than equal to 0.7 cm and uh, the wall swirling jets and the flow convergence uh, and the systolic reverse of pulmonary veins uh, considered as a severe and uh, the doppler signals of the mitral wall uh, mr jet Uh, of dense and triangular variety uh, with e wave velocity of more than 1.2 meters per second with enlarged llv size they are considered as severe uh, uh, if they are intermediate they are moderate and if they are uh, there is a systolic dominance in pulmonary pulse wave doppler uh, and the uh, e wave velocity is less than 1 meters per second and uh, la area is uh, the jet area is occupying less than 20% of the la area and vena contracta width of less than 3 cm they are considered as mild anything in between is considered as moderate <clears throat> so the 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 keywords of this particular updates uh, uh, remains the same if there is a secondary mr and uh, uh, lesser uh, volumetric uh, um, uh, measurements can be considered uh, uh, can be taken into consideration to address this mitral valve if you have a poor lvs and if you have a good lvs so depending upon the added or the uh, clinical presentations of the patients along with the mitral regurgitation we have to consider everything when you take into account whether to address that well or not so uh, the knowledge and application of the ecs guidelines for the management of mr are overall adequate for a primary but often inappropriate for the secondary mr and eor of more than 30 Uh, by two dimensional uh, proximal isolated surface area likely corresponds to severe uh, secondary mr that means ischemic mr in contrast to uh, whether if it orifice area of more than uh, 0.2 defines severe mr remains 
controversial this is the latest update in 2021 so uh, it it is all uh, uh, based on the uh, patient's lv function based on the dimensions of the lv other factors uh, uh, to be taken in consideration for uh, dealing with such mitral regurgitation coming to the assessment the goals of assessments are quantification of the ischemic mr and grading classifying the ischemic mr assessment of the mitral wall deformation assessment of global and regional lv remodeling whether the ischemic mr needs to be addressed feasibility of the repair and assessment of ischemic mr post surgery that is after repair or replacement first uh, important uh, parameter what we assess by 2d is vena contract weight it measures the linear dimension of the neck of the mr jet as it enters into the regurgitant orifice it is a simple linear measure and usually usually uh, relatively load independent uh, it it is measured in mesophageal long axis or four chamber view but uh, uh, depending upon the uh, allen carpentier classification the which, in whichever view you are getting a good jet that jet that particular view is used for measurement of the uh, vena contracta uh, most importantly uh, one thing we have to remember is we have to magnify the Uh, in a contractor region before you uh, take the measurement because smaller change in the measurement will differ the categories and the treatment aspect because reference range for vc has been defined in long axis plane long axis uh, uh, planes are used rather than two chamber planes so uh, this is a uh, uh, mesophageal long axis view for one patient uh, which which is suffering from the ischemic mr and if you can see if i if i am uh, increasing or the zooming the vena uh, contracta uh, area Uh, or vena contract uh, region we are getting uh, vena contract of 0.467 and uh, previously it was we were getting only 0.29 so zooming is important when we are dealing with the uh, measurement of the vena contract again this is one more example where uh, we have not zoomed in and we are not able to properly uh, delineate the uh, uh, mrvc where we are zooming in we are properly delineating the mrvc there is a difference between the two so zooming is important when you are dealing with the uh, vena contracta measurement Come, second is a distal mr jet area measurement mr jet area measures the high turbulence mosaic color doppler pattern produced by the mr flow as it enters into the left atrium distal to the mitral wall leaflet it is measured as an absolute area or a ratio of a with the relative la area size in a percentage so we we can give it as a absolute area or a percentage of the la area so decision of the preferred echocardiographic view to estimate the regurgitant jet area is based on origin of the jet in relation to the mitral wall leaflet scallops named by the standard allen carpentier classification so uh, this is uh, one of our patient in a mr midesophageal four chamber view we are measuring the area distal to the mr uh, orifice and uh, the absolute area here is 2.37 and when we are uh, taking in consideration the la area Uh, the uh, the percentage of the l area becomes 21% which is little more than the mild variety so uh, this is how you have to uh, 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 do the mr jet area versus the l area measurement important drawback of this technique in media, in transesophageal echo is uh, because it is a proximal structure in transesophageal echo la may not be completely Uh, cut or may not be completely seen we may lose some part of the la and so this particular method may be may not be that uh, accurate uh, as it is accurate in trans thoracic echo uh, coming to the morphology of the doppler signals continuous wave doppler uh, you can see here there are i have put two uh, doppler signals uh, one is a milder jet form where you you can see there is a not no no complete envelope or leaf uh, seen in the continuous wave doppler and here we can see the dense uh, triangular sort of uh, doppler signal of a severe uh, type of a mr jet so uh, uh, the uh, you can see here uh, this uh, mr looks uh, more of a severe variety and you can see this uh, doppler signal and uh, the uh, mr jet velocity the peak mr jet velocity is about almost uh, 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 580 cm per second and uh, jet vti is almost 239 cm categorizing it uh, is more likely to be a severe form of mr if the same patient's uh, uh, mr uh, radius if we are measuring uh, the it is it is coming as 0.784 so it comes into a severe kind of uh, mr jet variety to the pulmonary venous doppler uh, pulmonary venous doppler <coughs> uh, uh, whenever there is a uh, uh, as the uh, mitral regurgitation severity increases the systolic uh, dominance of the uh, pulmonary venous doppler goes off so 
uh, when whenever we have a milder category of MRZ, we have a systolic dominance, uh, as we can see in this image. And uh, as we progress uh, to the moderate to severe kind of uh, MR, I have kept the reference image in the center to see how the MR is increasing there and how the uh, Doppler signals are changing. So here we have a smaller S wave and a prominent D wave. And in third variety, where there is a severe kind of uh, MR jet, as seen in the middle uh, middle uh, video, uh, you can see here the there is a systolic blunting, there is a systolic blunting, and there is a peak of the uh, diastolic wave, and we have uh, uh, what, what we call as a a river, uh, the a, a dur or a, a pulmonary a reversal wave is more deep and more prolonged, and there is a reversal of the systolic wave. Uh, as as you can see here, this is a systolic wave 34. Diastolic wave has velocity of uh, 82 and the A reversal uh, velocity is 44 and uh, A reversal duration is 169 milliseconds. So all this comes into a category of severe form of the uh, ischemic mitral regurgitation or uh, mitral regurgitation. Now coming to the peak E and A wave velocities. As the MR progresses to a severe category, the <clears throat> peak uh, mitral E wave uh, inflow velocity increases. This is a, a this is an image of a severe MR. Uh, where we have a velocity of 1.26 meters per second. And this is a patient with the milder form of MR where we have a velocity of peak E wave is uh, 0.7 meters per second. This is a reference image of the same uh, patient and this is a peak uh, E wave velocity 1.26 meters per second. Coming to the quantitative assessment, proximal as velocity surface area uh, method or flow conversions method. The effective regurgitant orifice area is the area of regurgitant orifice through which the MRJ emerges into the left atrium. MR regurgitant volume measures the amount of blood in millimeter ml uh, reg regurgitating back into the LA during each heartbeat. And regurgitant fraction is a it measures the fraction of blood which regurgitate back from the left left ventricle into the left atrium through the regurgitant orifice. EORA regurgitant volume and regurgitant fraction together uh, is a quantitative estimate of the MR severity. So this is a formula by which it is given effective regression orifice area is given by 2 pi r square into aliasing velocity of the MRZ divided by the peak velocity of MRZ. So this uh, r is a radius of the hemisphere of the PISA zone. Uh, regression volume is given by multiplying this particular regression orifice by uh, MRZ continuous wave Doppler uh, VTI or MRZ VTI and regression fraction is given by dividing this MR volume by transmitral inflow volume into 100. Uh, let us consider this example. This is one of our patient uh, where there is a central jet, more of a central variety, and uh, we have uh, the, uh, shifted the baseline uh, up to get a proper uh, hemisphere of the PISA, and then we have put a continuous wave Doppler. We are measuring the same here. We are seeing the MR radius of 0.788, and uh, we have a MR uh, Vmax of uh, uh, 434 uh, and effective regurgitant orifice area is given by this uh, uh, calculation as a 0.26 centimeter square. So coming into a moderate category. Now regurgitant volume is given by uh, multiplying this particular effective regurgitant orifice area by MRJ VTI. Here MRJ VTI is 120, so it becomes 31.16 ml. So again coming into a uh, moderate category. And uh, when we are, uh, when we want to calculate the regurgitant fraction, we have to take consideration of the metal wall VTI. Here, metal wall VTI is 21.8, and the metal wall area, metal wall area by planimeter is 4.8 of the same patient. So, metal uh, regurgitant fraction is given by this uh, the previously calculated MR volume divided by this transmetal inflow volume into 100. The transmetal inflow volume. Uh, 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 the, the my MR volume divided by transmetal volume we gives us a regression fraction of 30 uh, percent. So, uh, this is another example. Here, the effort regression orifice area is coming as 0.12, that is milder variety. Regression volume coming as uh, 30, and the regression fraction is coming as 24.26 percent. So, uh, uh, the, what are the pitfalls and advantages? Proximal isolated surface area or a proximal flow conversion cal calculation requires a geometric assumption of hemispherical shape to the PISA region, which is not always the case. So technically challenging to measure PISA radius accurately, especially in the eccentric jets. 
the doppler volumetric method calculates resistant volume as a mitral inflow minus the aortic outflow so it has multiple measurement steps and each with the potential for measurement of variability or error and if at all there is associated aortic regurgitation then the the calculation becomes more worse uh, uh, it requires two non stenotic valves without impo uh, important aortic insufficiency that's why whenever you are calculating uh, mr by a quantitative measure make sure that uh, aortic incompetency is not very significant even though there is a mild aortic incompetence uh, your uh, values are changing uh, too much from the actual values there is a chance of 2d echocardiographic underestimation of imr by flow conversions method derived by eora due to a, uh, crescent orifice of the geometry of ischemic mr uh, pulmonary venous flow reversal is a specific for severe mr although it is a lower sensitivity it has a lower sensitivity chamber enlargement dense continuous wave doppler and elevated e wave velocities are to be considered when you are laboring that particular mr as a severe not only a quantitative we have to consider this all semi quantitative methods also 3d echocardiography has been demonstrated to provide accurate reproducible mr grading using 3d guided planimetry of uh, vena contracta uh, which is essentially equivalent to the direct measure of effective resistant orifice area this is how it is done Uh, we are uh, acquiring acquiring the full volume uh, uh, 3d zoom of the mitral valve we are putting a uh, color that is color 3d and we are measuring the direct uh, effective resistant orifice area in 3d so here uh, the 3d vena contracta is coming as 0.45 cm square while by calculation of the effective resistant orifice area it was coming as 0.37 cm square so there is a big difference uh, one is becoming moderate the other one is becoming severe so probably the 3d vena contracta area measurement will be a gold standard but not at in the guidelines they have included so study of ischemic mr requires a comprehensive evaluation of the two dimensional echo and a doppler uh, flow profiles both quantitative and semi quantitative along with the specific signs are to be considered for uh, grading and attention to be played for the leaflet morphology motion and severity of mitral regurgitation and uh, origin and direction of the regurgitant jet this is a proposed algorithm published in annals of cardiac anesthesia in 2017 uh, for the uh, surgery for ischemic mr for severe mr uh, 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 the treatment is uh, mitral wall angioplasty or mitral wall replacement mitral wall replacement is better if there is a tethering area is more uh, annular dimensions are high and sphericity indices are high and lv uh, diastolic dimensions are high after uh, angioplasty there are chances of recurrence and these are the factors which are important for the recurrence of the uh, uh, ischemic mr after cabg so if you have a higher tenting areas higher tenting heights leaflet angles are more and annular dimensions are or there are more chances that the this particular mitral wall repair may uh, re may, re may reappear so better to replace such valves Uh, this is in brief two slides i have kept for uh, if somebody asks for how to measure the tenting area and tenting angles this is in mid special four chamber view the fra the frame is freezed exactly at the uh, at the uh, isovolumetric contraction phase of the cardiac cycle which corresponds to just uh, later half of the qrs complex like this and you can measure the tenting area the tenting height and the posterior leaflet angle these are all uh, uh, wa these are all called as mitral wall deformation indices which are important when you consider the repair surgeries or replacement surgeries second is the sphericity index uh, this slide i have kept because last uh, in last lecture there was a debate regarding uh, whether how to measure this sphericity index so there are two ways of measuring the sphericity indices one is called as a uh, sphericity dimension index which is uh, normally measured by the width and the breadth of the lv and the uh, volumetric index is measured by uh, calculating the lv volume in systole divided by uh, the as uh, the sphere which has a same length of that of the lv uh, uh, imaginary sphere of the same uh, having a dimension of the same uh, length of the lv so if you calculate volume of that sphere and calculate the volume of r uh, lv and if you divide this two it becomes a sphericity index here yeah, the systolic sphericity index of more than 7.7 is uh, better to replace such valve so summary in summary uh, the quantitative cmr uh, primarily uh, by the indices of leaflet tethering and uh, tenting effectively integrating the 
uh, other uh, desperate multiple forces we have to consider recommended definition for secondary mr is now same as that of the primary mr there is no difference between the two uh, local and <clears throat> local remodeling and the mitral apparatus deformation are the strongest predictors of the severity of ischemic mr degree of lv enlargement and dysfunctions uh, were not the primary determinants of ischemic mr mitral valve does not change its planarity with revascularization along with the patients uh, uh, alone in the patients with ischemic mr we have to deal with such of the uh, such mitral valves surgically use uh, echocardiographically based uh, treatment strategy uh, has contributed to reduced post operative mitral regurgitation improvement in mr was associated with reduction in lv size and improvement in lv function myocardial viability and adequate uh, adequacy of the revascularization mitral valve surgery is reasonable in chronic severe ischemic mr chronic moderate ischemic mr whether to address such valves is still as uncertain uh, pre operative good lv adds to the probability of cabg only reduce the ischemic mr in patients with uh, mr when they are coming for cabg patients with severe mr mr did not regress after cabg alone so we have to uh, either repair or replace that valve presence of ischemic mr is associated with increased morbidity and mortality te is an important assessment uh, uh, in patients undergoing surgical revascularization and it provides another opportunity to assess ischemic mr before you are going ahead with the surgical procedure so very important to put te probe in patients with uh, uh, patients who are undergoing cabg rule out the mr severity and help the patient uh, to address that particular valve and get the good outcome out of the surgery Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Abhinav, for your and extensive presentation on ischemic mitral regurgitation. As we all know, when we are dealing with mitral regurgitation, we overlook the ischemic MR as compared to organic MR. Uh, however, one has to keep in mind that ischemic uh, mitral regurgitation itself will further deteriorate the LV function. And so, to know the severity of this uh, ischemic MR, uh, cardiologists uh, like Patrick Gara, who has a greater contribution regarding this ischemic mitral regurgitation uh, quantification, he has said that uh, sometimes uh, we underestimate uh, by the various quantitative indices, whether it is flow or, uh, or velocity or dimension uh, quantitative indices. So one has to look of, uh, or determine the severity by uh, objectively. And uh, uh, why this is so? Because uh, uh, as Dr. Abhijit has uh, said, that the LV geometry geometry is changed, especially there is a posterior dilatation this of this. Uh, and the, also the this jet is eccentric, especially when there is the involvement of posterior and inferior wall. Uh, the uh, the shape of the jet is also crescent, so we underestimate uh, sometimes uh, this MR. So whether the correction of this uh, ischemic MR by either transcatheter method in cath lab or in the operative uh, this in the cardiac operation theater. So we as a intraoperative or uh, echocardiographer, our role in uh, such ischemic MR is uh, in pre CPV period to confirm the whatever transthoracic uh, echocardiography findings and also to uh, give suggestion or to give advice to the surgeon that which type, uh, which size of the uh, valvuloplasty, annular valvuloplasty ring they should choose because they usually prefer to do a undersizing of the uh, annuloplasty ring. And uh, after the uh, post CPB or in the post CPB period, uh, we had to evaluate whether the, there is the adequacy of this repair. Uh, uh, is there any uh, presence of paravalvular leak or there is any presence of SAM and, uh, or whether there is a, uh, the area is reduced that it can tend to a mitral stenosis, especially when there is an alferi stitch is taken to uh, repair, edge to edge repair is done. So, uh, because this will you know, decrease the cardiac output. So, our role as a cardiac anesthesiologist, as an 
operative echocardiographer is very important and to deal with this i will say uh, you should not stick either to the 2d or 3d so the 2d and 3d they are complementary and uh, no one is superior to another that is what my uh, view is and my experience is uh, thank you and i think uh, we will go to the if there are any questions uh, can i see the questions Any questions are there? Rajiv, can I say? Good morning, sir. Uh, good, Hello. Morning. good morning. Uh, good morning. Good, 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 nice presentation, Abhijit. Uh, my, you, this one is uh, clinically, we face a lot of problem. A severe MR will become during uh, under anesthesia, become mild to moderate. Yes, sir. So, what's your advice? Uh, this one, what all the this one? Because surgeon will say, uh, simple uh, revascularization will go for uh, suffice. Uh, sir, uh, there are many uh, load independent, relatively load independent measures. There are load uh, dependent measures. So, we have to <clears throat> take all in consideration. For me, if you ask, better to assess the MR severity when they are they have just done a sternotomy. Mm. When they have done a sternotomy, the effect of our uh, uh, anesthetic agents are on lower side. So the, the little bit increase in SVR will be there because of the uh, patient's surgical stimulus. And uh, just before applying that retractor for the lima harvesting, that is the best uh, point where you can uh, estimate that particular MR. That is one. Second, <clears throat> integrate uh, quantitative as well as uh, supportive as well as the semi-quantitative signs. See, sir, uh, the, if MRZ comes down, LSI also comes down if there is a load dependent. So uh, that also can be a, a good uh, uh, method of uh, considering it as a moderate or severe. Second important thing uh, is uh, the um, <clears throat> uh, whenever you feel that the patient is in lateral plane or he has uh, like there is little bit tachycardia or uh, such type of uh, phase of the surgical procedure before grafting, uh, you assess the MR again in that place. Another thing, don't assess MR in only one uh, view. Assess in all the views. See the uh, jet, uh, exact orientation of the jet, jet, in which view the jet is coming. Sometimes in four chamber view, you are seeing a milder jet. And where, when we are going to the commissural view, you see the big jet coming from the posterior, uh, uh, posterior uh, uh, commissure. So, all that integrative approach has to be taken in consideration along with the LV global and regional remodeling. If you feel that the LV size is very uh, big, if the LV volumes are high, if the sphericity indices are high and uh, MR is of a moderate category, uh, we can fairly say that uh, uh, this particular mitral uh, needs to be repaired, sir. Uh, something has so to be done. So, fit to orifice area for the... Effective orifice uh, area, uh, till now guidelines, they have still, uh, they are still mentioning that it has to be more than 0.4 for addressing that wall as a severe. Moderate, it is a surgeon's decision, sir. If uh, he feels that there, uh, there are associated uh, uh, multiple jets, there are uh, other parameters uh, which has to be considered, patient's heart failure admissions and all, then uh, he may address that mitral wall. But important thing is, he has to repair that wall. If it is a moderate yes. MR, Either he has to leave it alone or he has to repair that wall. He cannot replace that uh, metal valve as per the guidelines. Another thing, if you have a good viable myocardium, you are assessing the metal valve, you have a moderate kind of MR, and if you feel that uh, LV wall thickness is good, uh, the, the chance of uh, this particular myocardium come into its good contractions after uh, re, uh, after the surgical revascularization, definitely that MR is going to come down by uh, the grade what you are seeing in the preoperative uh, image. So, uh, uh, look at the LV wall also, the regional LV function also. Grade the MRC, uh, the regional wall motion score. If you have a good regional wall motion, motion score or you have a stunning type of myocardium which is uh, going to improve after surgical revascularization, assess the valve again after surgical revascularization and then comment on it. Uh, most of the times, this grade 2 MRs uh, come down to the grade 1 or a trivial if you have a viable myocardium. So, viable myocardium is a very important factor uh, for the regression of the uh, mitral regurgitation in ischemic uh, kind of MR. Uh, 
and uh, you said the only chronic how about in acute mr uh, sir uh, i have i have considered chronic in my okay, slides okay. because uh, because there is a uh, what we get as an anesthesiologist is a patient with chronic. cabg with some kind of mr no surgeon operates uh, on acute mr uh, uh, with cabg that is one and uh, all the all in view of cardiologist and in view, in view of surgeon it is always better to wait for some time uh, uh, after the acute uh, mi uh, for the operation uh, they will at least uh, spend 7 days 14 days to see how the mr category behaves uh, uh, how whether the mr settles down with the medical management and then uh, we will plan for that particular uh, this one but uh, definitely in case of acute mr we have to see the pathology if it is a ruptured papillary muscle uh we have to go ahead and replace that particular valve if uh, uh, if it is a uh, uh, flail uh, uh, ruptured cordae and giving rise to a flail uh, type of mr uh, uh, regurgitation which comes in a primary category definitely we have to do a mitral wall repair for that thank you with or without thank you yes, thank you thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. couple of comments from my side Uh, the assessment of mitral regurgitation must take place before the patient comes to theater accurate assessment of the mitral regurgitation must be done before the actual surgery because you yes. know that the anesthesia will reduce the grade of mr and you will be underestimating the grade of mr in the anesthesia situations that is one secondly if you really want to assess the grade of mr in in the theater under anesthesia you must try to reproduce the street conditions that is the blood pressure should go back to the original okay. patient's level before anesthesia by using either the trentlenburg position volume infusion or uh, use of phenylephrine that is the second thing and also so now that with uh, availability of 3d echocardiography the vena contractor sometimes may not be spherical or uh, elliptic uh, it may not be actually circular so you you can get the vena contractor area 3d vena 3d which is little more uh, accurate and uh, there is one question in the chat box about the direction of eccentric uh, jet in uh, what is the direction of the jet in ischemic mr Uh, sir most is jets it, are uh, is it towards the tethered leaflet or away from the tethered leaflet uh, sir it is towards it yeah yeah it's towards the tethered leaflet mostly mostly they are posterior jets sir because uh, most common tethering uh, uh, is seen in inferior wall of the posterior mitral leaflet and uh, in the direction of that the tethering the jet will be uh, directed because the uh, it is called as a like a relative type of uh, uh, problem with the valve the leaflets are normal just because of because of the subvolvular tethering uh, because of the regional lv remodeling the jet is appearing and that jet is directed towards the tethered leaflet and uh, yeah. it is usually a posteriorly directed jet sir yeah because in anterior wall mis and all the jets are central yeah, yeah it comes under carpenter's edward uh, Car- carpenter's 3 3b sir yeah, yeah. it's fixed leaflet that's all any other comments are there uh, dr dasurkar yes sir can we make it simple flare is away and yes. restricted is towards yes sir yes sir that's yeah but whenever there is a flare leaflet it doesn't come in category of ischemic mr sir it becomes a primary no 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 this is in general Yeah, yeah. Uh, because Correct, the question sir. is but, where it goes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and also you, we should also understand that there may be both the mechanism, primary and secondary mechanism, in a given patient with ischemic heart disease. For example, uh, you can have uh, a flail leaflet because of the co- rupture of the cardiac tendon, and yes, also sir. the ischemic component may also be present. Ischemic primary MR. Okay. uh can we have a class on 3d t please we will do that thank you so much somebody is dr kritika has asked for a separate session on 3d t we will do that in a subsequent session
Are there any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Abhijit, for that excellent presentation. I will uh, request Dr. Sanjita to do the final uh, yeah. concluding Thank remarks. And... Sanjita, can you please conclude the session and then... Uh... Yeah. Um, uh, with the expert comment and the... Um, Excellent presentation by uh, Dr. Aditi. I think we all are clear with the, our concept of ischemic mitral regurgitation and to break the severity and when to address uh, uh, to this ischemic MR. So, uh, with the help of 2D as well as 3D, real time 2D. Uh, and we, as an intraoperative echocardiographer, should keep in this mind. We uh, under our patients are under anesthesia, which will reduce the or the will uh, underestimate the severity of MR. So we have to make, as Dr. Uh, Sanji sir said, that we have to make the hemodynamic stability and make the pressures uh, at the preoperative level by giving vasopressors or, or if required inotropes. And then you should quantify the severity of the mitral ischemic mitral regurgitation, and uh, you should uh, be a, a good uh, uh, advisor to the surgeon in the failure of the procedure. Uh, with this, I conclude this meeting and thank you everyone for attending this meeting and um, congratulations to Dr. Ali. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Dr. you, sir. Dr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Abhijit. Thank you, Vinayak and others who participated in the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving the opportunity. Thank you. Should I uh, should I discontinue, sir? Uh, yes, sir. You can uh, unshare your screen, sir. You can oh. log out, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir.